You're going to leave here knowing that we Latin people have made this country great for you. I'm John Leguizamo, and this is a first look at Leguizamo Does America. Chicago is a very important city for me because that's one of the cities that allowed me to create my craft, my art, my one-man shows. It was very theater friendly. It's a huge Latinx population of, of Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, and Colombians and Cubans there as well, and Hondurans and Central Americans. But I've never been to the, to the Latin side. I've only been to the Magnificent Mile, which is a little privilege of me, a little privy. But I was so glad to have come into the real neighborhoods where Latin people are living, thriving, and fighting for basic human needs. I'm here on Chicago's west side in La Villita, or Little Village where there's one of the largest Mexican-American communities in the Midwest. The Mexicans who settled here came looking for work and ended up creating the second biggest economy in Chicago, right here on 26th Street, the Mexican Magnificent Mile. With over hundreds of shops, I needed a local guide. So I'm meeting up with Hollywood legend and Chicago native Michael Peña. Michael, what's up, how you doing? How's it going, dude? I'm sorry I'm overdressed. No, no, I think you're the first person I've ever seen with a suit here. In this town? No, right? not in this neighborhood, because there's a lot of quinceañeras here. Oh, so you I'm thought I was saying. going to quinceañera? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is your favorite spot, huh? I've been coming to this spot since I was four. Wow. You know, my dad, every time before and after soccer games, we would come here. It just, it's always been a yeah. part of my life. Dude, if I did something good, if I got an A on a test and, and got straight A's, like, my dad would bring me here. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. When I was, like, six, I had the torta for the first time and it had, like, cream. That's when I was like, oh, this is it. And so for the last 40-some-odd <laughs> years... You switched over to torta and yeah, forget yeah, no. the taco. <laughs> Hanging out with Michael Pena was a blast. I mean, this kid is so talented and an example of the great Latin talent that we have in America. And that he goes back to the neighborhood that he grew up, the ghetto neighborhood that he grew up. He goes back and gives back. I love that kid. It isn't surprising for a fireman to be a hero, but it's uncommon for a fireman to be Latin because 77% of firefighters in the United States are white. So how did the humble park bomberos crack the code? John, here are the humble park bomberos. Oh, uh, qué placer. The pride of well, humble Chief, park. Frank nice to meet you. Chicago Fire Department Chief. Johnny Busa, cantado bienvenido. This is an all Latin firehouse. Correct. How did you do that, man? I always wanted to work in my community, and Lieutenant Musa also had the same inspiration. So they were just accepting of Latin people coming into a, a predominantly white boys club. Wow. There was some resistance. These guys have every right to be proud of what they do because not everyone is cut out for this line of work. And they're about to put me to the test. We got some gear here. Without this gear, we can't kiss the dragon, right? Mm. This is where all our candidates go through. They put this on. And, John, you got to do this in under a minute. Under a minute. I put $100 that I can beat you all. Got $100 you got no on. <laughs> <laughs> go, go. Oh, you mother... <laughs> this trap. <laughs> oh, it came out of the booth. <laughs> I won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Let's give John a surprise. Right. Hey. You guys are too kind. A plus for he twice. won, he won. He's a real winner. Oh. <laughs> I lost. I, I keep losing. I'm a very classy loser. It was so exciting to be there. They're so proud of what they do. And they serve the community with honor, with self-sacrifice. And I was so glad to share a meal with them. While Americans fought in World War II, it was Mexicans who helped build the Midwest. The Bracero program recruited them to work on American farms and factories across the United States. But just as quickly as they got here, Americans wanted them out. Ever heard of Operation Wetback? Well, get this. Once the war was over, President Eisenhower's administration had the Immigration and Naturalization Services deport hundreds of thousands of hardworking Mexicans and even Mexican-American citizens who had the right to be here. They used military-style tactics to rapidly locate, process, and deport people. This program led many to believe the government's actions were racially motivated. Operation Wetback was the biggest mass deportation of undocumented workers in American history. It was really fascinating to find out about the Operation Wetback Act because it was the second time in Latin history American citizens 
who happened to be Latino were deported. Their, their wealth was taken from them. Their political power was taken from them. First, it was with the Repatriation Act of 1930. Herbert Hoover deported two million American citizens. And again, they did it to us with the Operation Wetback Act in the 1950s. It went into the 60s and 70s. About, I think about a million American citizens were deported in those raids. My hope for the community in Chicago is that they continue fighting, that they continue supporting each other, and that the Mexican and Puerto Rican communities come together and the black communities because they're, they will be an unstoppable force. Hey, thanks for watching. The next full episode airs Sunday on MSNBC at 10 p.m. Eastern and the next day on Peacock. Hey, it's going to be legit. I'm telling you, it's going to be fire.